I think in the beginning, um, this person was a lovely person. That kindness, that uh, empathy, that supportive person. This other person that saw me for who I was and cared about the person I was. But that person also became sort of overpowering and possessive. The relationship changed from at the beginning being uh, quite a, a um, supportive and loving one to um, quite domineering and, and controlling, yeah. I didn't know anyone to talk to. There was no one to go to to get counselling, no one LGBT. Um, I ended up going to an elderly counsellor who was really, really good in the end. And he just told me to hold my head up high and, and make sure I was who I needed to be, which was probably the wisest words I'd ever heard in a long time. <laughs> and I think that was when I started realising this isn't a safe environment for me to be in. It's not, not, this is not a loving relationship. The day I raised my hand, that was the day that I realised I'm not a violent person, very not a very easygoing and very loving, and um, I don't hit people. And to realise I was pushed to the point of it was self-defence because I was cornered in the corner, and, and I just went to hit that out of the way. I didn't hit her, but I put my hand up, and I realised that isn't me, and I don't like it. And so that was the low point. That was where I said, I have to get out of here. I spoke with that counsellor and I made a plan and that was to continue with the plans to go on the holiday, to do the holiday, um, because I felt if I had changed before the holiday, this would have made it very different for everybody. It would have been a difficult position to be in. I came back that three weeks early and that was when I put the things into place to move the, the relationship apart. And, and I felt safe doing that. It was a much stronger position to have that three weeks gap, that strength. Uh, monetarily, um, uh, support systems wise, I could get myself ready and I got ready for that. I think if you're not comfortable and something doesn't feel right, your gut instinct, I think you should listen to that. I think you should take note of that discomfort because that's a red flag. Go out and analyse it and if it's not right, get out of it. As hard as it was, it was a really big learning curve and realising that as difficult as things could be, I could get past them, I could get through them. That's why I took that degree in human services so I could go back in and utilise that knowledge and that learning and go back in and, and work with other people. And I think that um, being able to listen to somebody and hear them as that counsellor did for me, um, is, a, is a, a very good thing to be able to do, but doing it from the perspective of being a gay person, working within the gay community. Well, I've just concentrated the last few years on myself and developing my own uh, self-awareness around what is good for me and what isn't good for me, and what makes me happy, and doing things that make me happy. I really think that people need to be seen and heard to heal. We need to be talking about this so that it's a normal part of our conversations and our existence. And I think the only way we're going to get everybody respecting everybody is to educate.